Hello, and welcome to Wednesday Midweek Refueling. I am stepping in today for Pastor Denny. As many of you know, he just had gallbladder surgery yesterday. Now, just a quick update. He's doing very well. He had the surgery and he is now at home recuperating. So let us just start out this, this evening with a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can just lay all of our needs and our wants and our desires in your hands. And Lord, we specifically today are grateful that you have just um, covered Pastor Denny and just wrapped your arms around him and that you have brought him to this point of recovery. Lord, we thank you for that. We pray for continued healing, for strength, and for a speedy recovery. Lord, we just uh, ask that you would just bless this time together right now and that everything we do and say would be glorifying to your name. In your precious son's name we pray. Amen. So today I thought it might be fitting to talk about waiting. I don't know about you, but I am not a great waiter. But in the big scheme of life, we spend a lot of our time waiting. Waiting for this, waiting for that waiting in the line at the grocery store or whatever store you go to, waiting in the car at a stoplight, waiting for um, a test to come back. Maybe you've gone to a doctor and you've not only waited in the waiting room, but then you're waiting for test results to come back, waiting for this, waiting for that. Maybe you're waiting for an unanswered prayer Maybe you're um, waiting for your child to start to um, learn something new or to be obedient in this way or that way. Maybe you're waiting for a relationship to be healed and to be restored. Maybe you're um, waiting for your own healing. Whatever it is in life, we spend a whole lot of time waiting. One of uh, my favorite verses, and actually my son's favorite verse, is Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This verse has come to be his favorite from, from when he was a little child. And it has carried him through, through a lot in life. And I have really come to appreciate this verse. And whenever I'm feeling anxious or um, impatient about something, the Holy Spirit just reminds me that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And it reminds me that we are to just give it all to God in the waiting or in the hurriedness of life, whatever it is. And when we wait, it, it is important um, when we wait about how we're waiting. So just an example, I don't, I don't know about you, maybe you wait well, but sometimes I have to be reminded to um, have patience in the waiting and to really refocus my thinking when I'm in the waiting. So sometimes um, what I'll do is I will just intentionally just reflect on the majesty of our Lord and just reflect on who he is and what he's done for me. And as I'm doing that, then things will come into my mind and I will get refocused on really about how I should be in the waiting. Um, sometimes it helps to put on, at least for me, put on some worship music or at least, um, you know, some music in the background that is healing and brings life and is restoring. It helps me to um, just maybe uh, not think so much on what I'm waiting for. And always, I think it's always a good idea to pull out our Bibles in the waiting and to maybe just read a scripture or two and just kind of refocus on, um, on, on what it would be that God would have us to be thinking about instead of getting all stirred up and anxious while we're waiting. I don't know about you, but sometimes emotions do get in the way and we're all human. Our emotions will show up from time to time and we, we have to 
um, when that happens. We have to just acknowledge it. We have to recognize it. And we have to take hold of those emotions. And we have to turn them around so that they are obedient to the Word of God. And we only know that um, if we know what the Word of God says. So when I start in the waiting, having feelings or emotions of doubt or insecurity, then maybe I'll think about, huh, but God, doubt, fear, insecurity is not from you. I know that you give strength and courage and um, that's where we're to focus. And so I'll reflect on that and maybe I'll turn that circumstance around. The earlier you can recognize that, the better, because we all know emotions can be very strong. And if we allow them to go on and to take hold, then um, it becomes harder to turn them around. Not impossible, but it just takes a little more effort on our part. So um, in the waiting, what do you do? When you're waiting for God to answer a prayer or when you're waiting in the grocery store line, do you look around you? Do you notice people? Do you notice that maybe somebody might be hurting? Or do you just randomly maybe pray for somebody? I know that's what I've come to do. So when I'm waiting, I turn my thoughts, not on myself, but on someone else. And that does help in the waiting. So maybe I'm at a stoplight and maybe, or, or not at a stoplight, but maybe there's a long line of traffic and I'm anxious to get home. Maybe it's the end of the day and I'm anxious to get home, but there's this long line. So I look around, I look at the cars, I look at the people that are in the cars and I just allow the spirit to speak to me. And then I start praying for those people. I don't know who they are. I don't know what their lives are like, but God does. And I allow God to influence my thoughts and to influence my prayers so that I am no longer thinking about me and sitting there waiting, but thinking about those other people. When I'm at work in my day and I'm going about my day, I deliberately and intentionally thinking about others. And as I'm walking, many of you know, I, I work in a hospital. And as I'm walking those halls, I pray for the people that are in the rooms. I pray for our patients. I pray for our patients' families. I pray for our team, our nurses, our doctors, our, our staff, everybody that is taking care of patients in one way or another. And I pray for them. So I'm no longer thinking about what it is that I'm hurrying to or hurrying from, but I change my focus. I change my focus so that I allow God to enter into my life and into my day in that moment and allow him to influence my thinking. I'll tell you what, it really um, takes away that worry, that anxiety, that sense of being impatient, but it takes a deliberate focus. It doesn't just happen. And for me, it just didn't, just didn't happen one day. It took some practice. I had to really intentionally force myself to think outside of me and outside of what was impacting me in my life in that moment, but to think about others and to think about what God would have me do in the waiting. I'll tell you what, if you can do that, it will truly just change your life and transform the waiting. Because remember, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings on eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's what it's about. It's about relying on God and dwelling in him every moment of the day and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide our steps, to guide our words, our actions, and our thoughts, so that as we go through our day, we are being a living example of who Jesus Christ is. And it takes effort, it absolutely does, because we're human. 
We're human and we're li living in an imperfect world, but it absolutely is possible. It is possible to just refocus and to get back on track and to abide with the Holy Spirit. Well, I hope this was helpful for you today for midweek refueling. Let's just end with a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for this time together. I thank you that we can look to you for our every need. I thank you that you're there with us in the waiting, in the suffering, in the valley, and on the mountaintops. And Lord, I just would pray that each and every one of us, that we would look outside of ourselves and we would serve and that with everything that we do and say, it would just be honoring and glorifying to your name. Thank you for going before us. I just pray a blessing on each and every person that is listening to this tonight or during the day and that their midweek would just be refreshed and refueled. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.